Just going for a walk to learn about the sugarcane industry. So this is Greg's fields here. Barry's out there working the harvester. We're just having a look at three nights ago, they burn all this off and he's now harvesting it. We left the keys behind, took the kids and brought our first caravan. Steph, Jed, Alex, and Harry. We are the To Doing family. What's on your to do list? What'll happen is he'll irrigate this in the next few days, if not today or tomorrow. Just start irrigating. It. Just flood it or? Flood irrigation. Started irrigating here. You can see all the water pouring out in amongst the fields. And this is why in Badekin, they, or Badekin, they have such big sugar cane because they've got unlimited water and it's just going to flood out over this field as far as you can see filling it up. So this, this will grow four or five times and harvest it before they have to start again and replant it all. We're on the tour. I just wanna be your morning light. The cane, yeah. kind of a bit like grass I guess, like lots of water to, to sit in. Yeah, they're just making grow and it takes one whole year to grow that big. Yeah, they're making grow and it takes one whole year to grow that big. Because it's a grass, it's just regrows. This comes straight up. Yep, no, touch it. And this is four weeks old. Four weeks old now. One man could cut 30 tonne of cane every day. 30 tonne? Yep. In those days. And um, that was pretty good. The stuff here is about a year old and it's being harvested today. And the next truck's ready to go. Wow, eh? Hey. Look at that. Hey boys, we're off for a ride. Yeah. <gasps> we're in the, the truck. We're going to go along and collect some cane. When he fills up the truck in front, then it's out in. Yeah. Our truck's filled up now, so the cane's going over to the trains. Off it all goes to the sugar mill. So this train picks up all these baskets and takes it off for processing at a sugar mill. Nah, that's clean smoke, dude. It's alright. From a mill. After our tour of the cane farm this morning, Greg's invited us to go and see a burn tonight. So every couple of days during the harvest season they do a burn and they invite the guests to go and watch which is pretty cool. Greg is very very generous with his time and really wants you to see and experience everything that's happening here on the farm so let's go and um, see a burn up close. Big rat, yep. So this is what it's all about. This is sugar cane. We're just waiting for the next fire to start up and we're getting to taste some. I thought I'd bring it over and show you in the light. And it's quite light and there's a lot of moisture in it. And as you actually bite down on it, oh, the sweet juice just pours out of it. And it's quite a watered down sugar. It's almost like a light cordial. It's really tasty. Mmm. <laughs> Mickey Mouth. About as fresh as you can get. Tastes sort of sweet. Tastes sort of sweet. Well, it is it's sugar, technically. Sugar cane. It's good, Harry. You like it? Really good. 
It's really good, Al, is it? You've got to crush it up. Yeah. Not a bad little outlook here at the Bedeakin Cane, Sugar Cane Farm Stay. Been hosted by Greg the whole time. Got power, got water, views over a waterway and sugar cane. We came for three days and we ended up staying for a week. It's just fantastic here um, in terms of value for money, but Greg as well is so welcoming and friendly and so generous as well. We've had pumpkins and capsicums and mango while we've been here, as well as a tour of the cane farm. Plus the cane burning, he's always on for a chat. He's taking the kids around the farm on his four-wheeler and absolutely just had a ball here for all of us. I reckon most people who come here, they end up staying a lot longer than they planned. Look, look, come on. Pretty Australian. Kangaroos hopping around the sugar cane fields. Gotta watch what they're gonna do, I guess. There <laughs> they come. See you boys. We're pulling into Plantation Park. It's um, essentially brand new. How's this for a playground and park area? So this is there. We're just having some lunch. We've been to the library today, done a little bit of schoolwork and work. And we're gonna have some lunch, play around the playground, and go off to the pool to relax, cool down. It's pretty new. Brand spanker. Massive, it goes all the way along. Brand new barbecues, heaps of swings. Just seen so many bubblers all around. Lots of water play. Just pulled up. This is the air swimming pool. We're gonna go for a bit of a dip. Ready to go? Yeah. Yeah. It's alright. Oh, nice. This is gotta be one of the deepest pools I've ever been in. So, me and the boys, we're gonna try and pin drop in as deep as we can go. Are we ready, boys? Yeah. All right, so are we ready? Yeah. In three, two, one, go. <laughs> well done. We're on the road again. This time we're heading down to Lake Proserpine, so we're still very much in sugarcane territory. You can see behind me, it's just sugarcane everywhere. So we're just going to cruise on further down the coast and we got wind that Lake Proserpine's opened up for camping literally four or five days ago. It was on social media, it was shared, 11,000 views. Uh, not many people have been there yet. Uh, it's very raw, but you get to camp right on the water on the lake, so we're gonna go do that and check out a bit of lakeside camping. Change of plan, we'll come and pass Bow and we thought, you know what? I hear Horseshoe Bay is amazing. We're gonna go check it out, have lunch here, go for a bit of a swim. We've just come around the corner of the peninsula. So this is Horseshoe Bay Beach. So we went into Horseshoe Bay and then around the corner there's a protected beach. Far less windy around here. And we're gonna have to check it, check it out. We might even go for a bit of a swim. This is Horseshoe Bay Beach. Look at that for amazing. The water is beautiful. It's calm, protected. And there's heaps of good snorkeling. It's pretty good. Look at that. We have not seen a swimmable beach for a long, long time. This is beautiful water. After having lunch by the beach, now we're thinking we're going to go for a swim before we get out to Lake Cross Pine. That's the great thing about when you travel, you have a bit of flexibility on where you're going. You can make adjustments like we're going to do. We're going to have a bit of a day swimming at the beach before heading off to our free camp down the road. It's only another hour. I'm just going to go and head out and try to get to the
We're just coming out of Horseshoe Bay Beach. Bit of a nice view on the way out. Yeah, Horseshoe Bay is pretty nice. Tides just coming back in. Couldn't help but stop for the giant mango. It's pretty Queensland now, I reckon. Like Cadinia Dam, like Cadinia, like Cadinia, Lake Crossifine, This is not like Argyle or the Cadinia Dam near where we live, no. this is like Crossifine. Did you not remember coming out? Similar dammed wall to the others. Wow, that was cool. There's something like 20,000 barra that's been released out here, just swimming around, they get over a metre in size. The love of God, even off the shore, hopefully we catch up. <gasps> Gotta do on this trip. It's brand new. It's new to wiki camps, new to everywhere. They didn't allow camping here, now they do. Let's go check out the Proserpine Dam, otherwise known as Lake Proserpine. How's this for amazing? We've just pulled up here, Lake Proserpine. Absolute waterfront. It's amazing. Pretty good spot. Good to go. It's going to be awesome. There's red claw out here in uh, Lake Proserpine. So what we've got is we've got a bait trap and we're using this to catch bait for when we go fishing. But I've put some vegetables in. Apparently the vegetarian, there's a mixed report on what they actually eat. Some people swear by cat food, dog food, off meat. We tried meat, didn't work. And we got told recently at the Badurkin sugarcane farm stay that they're actually vegetarian. So we're gonna try potato and carrot and we're gonna drop it off just out here in the water and see if we can catch some. It's in the water. See if we can get ourselves some red claw for dinner. I'm just in the midst of preparing dinner and putting snorkeling gear away and all that random stuff that mums do. And I look over, <laughs> there's this uh, lovely fairy cow, I guess it looks like. It's not even moving day yet. Oh, <laughs> no, it ended up becoming pretty good mate, so we've come out for a bit of a fish together, although he tells me he's vegetarian. Each to their own. really good job here setting up this as a free camp and as I said it's only a week old when we're here they've got a lot of big plans for it they're gonna be putting in some pontoons toilets showers a bunch of other stuff as well so works while we're here are actually happening they're sealing the roads it's gonna be a great spot make sure you come down and check out Lake Proserpine it's just basically 25 minutes off the highway in towards past Proserpine off to the library we go, this is the Proserpine Library. We use the libraries whenever we can to do a bit of study, a bit of work. It's good to get outside the van to do the schoolwork. How perfect is this? We've got a booth, a little charger over there. It's a good one. Just like that, all hell's broken loose. We're trapped here at the library and we've got some tropical rain. The town's will rain. Hopefully the caravan's are right back at home because she's pouring down. Yikes! Queensland! <laughs> I honestly haven't seen this much rain in so long. It is amazing. This is the first time we've experienced rain in a long, long time. And we had the window just cracked. It's so bad, it's actually come in and it's running through the whole car. I've got water dripping down on my feet and it is absolutely soaked. Um, lesson learnt about leaving the windows open in tropical rain. Honestly, I don't, we've got a weather shield up here and we've got that. I don't even understand how it's got in. It must have hit so hard that it's actually forced up and in to the window. It's only on this side of the car, so it must have just copped it. And now it's just dripping everywhere. And as I'm driving, it must be just full of water. My God. 
Right, hopefully I uh, haven't done any damage here. We've got more water in here than we did in Cape York. Yeah, I know. I didn't even get any through knowledge. Right. It's in here now. First whale, the kidnap is out in the rain. Get the cover, mate. He's getting there. He's hurrying along. We've just stuck down to the Proserpine swimming pool. The kids have had a bit of a play, a bit of a swim. It's free, so that was pretty cool. And now we're just heading back to camp. While we're away, all hell's broken loose with the storm. We've secured our awning, so that's not an issue, but I'm hoping we close all the relevant flaps. Um, we'll see how much water we've pretty got. Pretty sure I opened the mansion side before we left. Let's see how we go. Are we swimming? We've got snorkel gear. I've just come inside. There's been a storm and um, we've been impacted. It's literally wet. Wet, wet, wet. Not too bad in there. Literally. But floors just like us skating. Had a lot of water through. Have a look. It's literally raining from here. The water's just falling. Wow. So you've got to be careful on the old, old weather hatches there, it's water everywhere. Um, we weren't expecting such a big storm, big storm came. Uh, looks like this big mat has absorbed most of the water, which is great. And we're going to try to clean it up. We've cleaned up the floor. What happened was we left our hatches open, the all weather hatches, these ones here. So they literally just click open like that. We thought the storm had passed and so we left them open and went out for the afternoon but turns out the storm hadn't passed so <laughs> everything got wet. We came back from the pool and the caravan was wetter than we were. So we've taken all of our bedding off the bed, I'm not worried about that, it'll just wash easily and we've got spare sleeping bags we can use overnight. The end's a little bit damp so when we get the opportunity we'll pop that out in the sun but it's really just the end I think, it's actually not too bad. Good to have a waterproof on all of your beds. And out here, we've just got all of our towels hanging out and my good blanket. Um, hopefully there'll be enough wind to get them dry. Then we'll give them a wash when we hit up a caravan park in Early Beach. So late last night, we worked out the source of most of our water issues. Turns out that these all-weather um, uh, sunroofs, they've actually become come loose. And I suggest it's from when we did the Marini Loop or from when we did maybe the Gibb River Road or something like that. And this is the first real rain we've had in months, like it rained when we were in Perth, like for a couple of seconds, that was it. Um, so this is the first rain we've had. So this has been loose since then. So as a result, these little um, bolts you can see here have actually come loose and, and I suggest the, the roof, the water seals come loose and therefore water's been pouring in. So late last night it was just pouring in. So what I've done is I've just tightened those up, used an Allen key and then brought it back down and that stopped the leaking through the roof. Uh, good to know that for next time that uh, to check that if you've been on some corrugated roads and you've got one of these bad boys. So I'm just checking the other one here. So I'm just removing these covers here. And um, and just, these are the screws to check. So this one here is a little bit loose, so I just need to tighten that up. That's where I suggest all the water's come in. This has been an absolutely superb pre-camp. It's really one that you can come and just sit and relax and enjoy the scenery. People watch the boats that are out on the lake as the stacks out there every day and just enjoy nature. It's amazing the rolling hills that are sort of behind us. It almost has a North American type feel about it. Beautiful water, you could go for a dip if you wanted to as well. And an absolutely superb free camp to come and stay at. So it's been the perfect base for us in the Sundays before we head over to the beaches. Nice spot to sort of regroup and spend a few days. Here's our resort for the next few days. The boys have been looking forward to this one. Some water slides. Checking in. So when we pull up to a caravan park, I'll generally pull up in the check-in bay. Steph will head in to sort out the check-in process. And then we'll be given our key pass code and we'll go beyond that point.
Jed telling me I have to stand here for some reason. I'm not sure why. Uh, yeah. Come on, Hess. Uh, uh, Sudan, Harry. <laughs> what are you doing down there? He's getting us over. Okay, Harry and I are going up on one of these water slides. So there's 13. There's 13 water slides. There's number one. What number are we doing? Harry and I are going on this one. This is number one. Alright, number one. Alright, we'll do it one. Number one. Yeah. You ready? Number two. Alright, this is going to show me, Jed. That was pretty big. Oh, go. 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 Ready? Yeah. Speed in the train, here we go. Oh, no. So this is the resort here, so there's a big pool area, a couple of slides over there and then another 11 <laughs> that are up here. There's a kids play area as well, plenty of seating. Is it? Oh, okay. a fun 24 hours at the Whitsunday Resort, the Big Four. Boys have had a few swims and heaps of plays on the water slide, but we thought we'd come and have a look in Airlie Beach today, just so that we actually see in town. Have a bit of a look around yeah. and check out the views. Bit of money here, plenty of boats. Take a look at this playground. We've seen a few playgrounds around Australia, but look at that. <laughs> Al's pretty happy he's just made it to the top. <sighs> he's scaled up. There's an alternate route as well up here. It's pretty tall. It's a pretty awesome playground.